Good day again, everyone. Today we will be discussing another topic in statics of rigid bodies, which is dry friction. The objective of today's lecture is to understand Coulomb's theory of dry friction, which involves static case of bodies involving friction, impending sliding of bodies involving friction, dynamic case of bodies involving friction, and we will finally analyze bodies that involve friction using the theories of uh, Coulomb's drive friction. So let us first start with the definition of terms. So friction is the force generated between the surface of two objects sliding each other. It acts opposite to the direction of the object. So friction is almost present everywhere. Uh, when we are walking, there's also a friction between the sole and the floor where we are walking. So it prevents us from sliding. So if you are trying to push the table, you may find it hard to push the table, especially if it's heavy. It's because of the friction that is generated between the surface where the table is mounted and the foot of the table. So friction plays a very big role, not only in simple things that we see around us, but, but also in buildings. Some buildings' foundation rely on the friction between the foundation and the soil. So uh, the friction helps in the in structural integrity of the building. And uh, it's, it, it's not only in foundation, it's also uh, helpful in uh, designing highways because of the uh, contacts between the, the, the wheel and the pavement. So, it is very important for civil engineers to actually uh, understand the concepts of friction and not only for civil engineers but also in other aspects that involves mechanics because friction is almost present in all the interaction between materials. So to furtherly define, dry friction refers to the friction, the friction force that exists between two unlubricated surfaces. So in today's topic, we'll just focus on friction, uh, on dry friction that is uh, generated between two objects in contact. So the other type is the fluid friction. It acts between moving surfaces that are separated by a layer of fluid. So in Coulomb's theory of dry friction, it is said that the plane of contact between two bodies is tangent. So, as you can see here, we have two objects that is in contact. The plane contacts, the plane of contact is tangent to both the bodies. Now, if we isolate the free body diagram of the two bodies, each of them exerts normal force to one another. And as we discussed, uh, frictional force acts opposite to the direction of the object. Now, if this upper object is moving downward, then the friction acting on it is upward. Now, if this object is moving upward, the friction is downward. Again, friction resists movement. So, if you're trying to push a table, for example, what prevents you from moving the table is the friction that is going against the direction of the uh, intent, intended movement. So, actually, friction keeps or uh, helps or contributes or it tends to keep the object in place. So if you are if you're trying to push an object to the right, so the direction, since the tendency of a friction is to retain the stability of an object, so it is directed opposite to the movement. So again, if you're pushing the table to the right, then the frictional force would be opposite, which is to the left. So uh, frictional force works that way. So it's always opposite to the direction of the movement. So, in the figure, it shows that the free body diagram of the bodies where N, again, is the normal uh, contact force and F is the frictional force. The force N is perpendicular since it is a normal force and uh, the plane of contact is said to be perpendicular, then uh, the normal force is perpendicular to the plane of contact where uh, F lies on the plane of contact. So, always take note that F always lies on the plane of contact. Now, there is a relationship between F and N. Uh, it was said uh, that 
the force is proportional to the normal force. You can you can observe that uh, simply by if uh, if you're trying to push an object that is heavy, it is actually heavier to or uh, it it is actually harder to displace an object horizontally if it is heavier, despite the fact that um, the the weight, which is also a form of force, is acting downward. But it is why is it harder for you to push the object? When it is heavier, it is because the heavier the object is, the greater is the frictional force. Uh, for that case, if you're trying to push a heavy object. So, if the object is lighter, it is easier for you to push it. It's because it generates lesser value of frictional force. Despite the fact that the force, which is purely acting Y, for example, it's acting along Y axis, then why is it affecting the push or your push which is acting along x-axis or horizontal? It's because the force that is acting downward simply affects the frictional force which acts perpendicular to it or acting along the x-axis. So again, in the case where you're trying to push an object, if, you're, if your push is acting along x-axis, the heavier the object is or the greater the normal force is, the greater is the frictional force. It's because the frictional force is proportional to the normal force. Once there is a larger amount of normal force, there will be larger amount of frictional force. Now, if force and normal force are proportional, proportional to each other, they can be formed into this equation. That is F is equals to KN. So, uh, this equation was furtherly uh, modified such that they introduced the, propor uh, the proportionality K as mu s, or uh, what we call the coefficient of static friction. So this mu s is the proportionality constant between f and n. So, uh, this mu, mu s is actually useful in solving for the amount of friction generated because of the normal force. Now, if you if you get the value of the normal force, you can now get the value of frictional force if you have or if you have uh, identified the value of mu s. Now, this mu s was uh, determined using various experimentation. Actually, the mechanism of friction is very complicated, so that engineers are actually relying on experimental results on how much the frictional Coefficient of friction is generated between two objects. So this mu s is actually given or have already been identified. If you, if you're taking the board exams or you're taking examinations, most of the time the value of static uh, coefficient of static friction is given. Now in physics subjects, this uh, coefficient of static friction are actually uh, calculated uh, using indoor experiments. So, so, the term F is equal to mu S N is not always the value of the friction. It is the maximum friction that can be developed in a static case, which means the friction could be lesser than this value. For example, you are trying to push an object. You're pushing it uh, one kilonewton, but it's not moving. So the friction and the friction that is being uh, countered, uh, the friction that counters your push is equal to one kilonewton. I mean one newton. So if you push with two newton and it's the, the object still not moving. So the friction is 2 newton. So it depends on the, the amount of push. That is for the static case. But it's a different consideration if the object has already moved. So if you solve this one, for example, and you get a value of 5 newton, this is just an example, you get F is equals to 5. So you push, you push the, uh, the object, for example, 
uh, one newton, it would not equate to five newton. It would just equate the sufficient amount for amount of friction that would uh, cause or what that would maintain the stability of the object. So it would always um, it would always counteract with the uh, with your force, but to a certain limit that is the maximum value of frictional force. Again, friction, this equation is the maximum friction that can be generated, but it's not always the value of frictional force. Uh, there are some rookie errors in here that if they are asked on uh, what is the friction between uh, the frictional force between the table and the floor, but since there is no push or external factor that affects the movement, then the frictional force is zero. It doesn't have to be always mu n. So if, if there's a value, there will be inequal inequality in your equation. So the frictional force in a static case does not always yield its maximum value. It depends on the external forces acting on the body. For example, here, uh, you try to apply P. So the value of F should uh, it will try its best, or it's, it will try its maximum capacity to counteract P, but it doesn't have to always be greater than B. Now, if you solve, for example, a maximum value of F equal to 10 kN, and you apply only 5 newton of P, again, 10, you solve for maximum value of friction that is 10, and you only apply P that is 5, Definitely, your F would just be equal to 5 because uh, P only gives a value of 5 that it doesn't have to give its maximum value. It will just give its value equal to 5. If P is equal to 8, then F will just be equal to 8. If P is greater, uh, if P is equal to 10, then this will just be 10. Now, if this is P greater than, uh, uh, this, is, this P is equal to 11, then it is greater than the maximum value of a uh, frictional force, then this body will not be in uh, equilibrium or it will start to move. So, the value of frictional force is not always mu n. Mu n is just the maximum value. So, if the two contact surfaces are sliding relative to each other, the friction force F is postulated to be equal to mu k n, where again n is the normal force and mu k is an experimental constant, what we call coefficient of kinetic friction. Uh, therefore, if the body is now moving, we will not use the static uh, coefi uh, coefficient of static friction, rather we will use the coefficient of kinetic friction. And now, uh, we use the term the frictional force as F sub K referred to as kinetic or dynamic friction force. Now, uh, I want to show you a diagram uh, showing the values of frictional force and the applied value of force. Now, uh, in a static case where the object is not moving, uh, the frictional force using this diagram Using this diagram, if you apply the value of P, the frictional force will also increase in a linear manner. Take note, this is proportional. F is proportional to N. So, as you increase the value of P, the frictional force also increases. Until such time, F reaches its maximum value and it starts to move. So, the moment that the object uh, starts to move, or it is the ver it, it is the verge of movement. Then we call that uh, the impending case, or it is in impending sliding case. Now, once the object moves, it will suddenly decrease its frictional force because mu k is actually lower than mu s. So once it starts to move, then there will be a constant value of uh, kinetic friction. So unlike with the static friction, it is variable. The kinetic friction is constant. You can actually appreciate this one if you're trying to push something heavy. And then when it started moving, it is now easier for you to push the object once it is moving. It's because mu k is now is actually lower than mu s. 
Now, it is also popular uh, to hear the angle of static friction. Now, the angle of static friction is simply uh, the angle that the resultant between Fs and N form. So, it, uh, it can be solved using uh, by drawing the free body diagram of this one. If we have here an object having a weight and uh, push is applied in this, uh, to the right, so the tendency is that a static force will be uh, generated or there is a presence of static friction and a normal force. So if you get the resultant of the of Fs and the normal force, uh, the resultant is presented using this Rs. Now the angle uh, here can be determined using trigonometric function, specifically tangent. So uh, if you want to get this friction angle, so that is inverse tangent Fs over N or inverse tangent of mu s n over n. And then, uh, it's because f s is equal to mu s n, n will cancel out. So, uh, the angle of static friction is equal to the inverse tangent of mu s. So, if you want to get the angle of friction, you will just need to get the inverse tangent of mu s. This is also the concept used in the experiment to determine the friction between two objects. In the physics subject, uh, it is introduced, uh, the, the friction is int actually introduced and it is uh, determined by um, using a plank and a block and then tilting the block until such time the block will slide along the plank. And the, and the angle of, uh, in which it slides is what they term as the angle of static friction. So, uh, it is nice if you can recall that experiment for you to appreciate the angle of static friction. So, it is in the same manner how the kinetic friction can be determined using the free body diagram. So, the angle of kinetic friction equal to the inverse tangent of uh, uk. So let us apply it in our structures. The first case is that uh, the problem does not state if the object is in impending or not. So in some cases, uh, the problem will specify if this will be in impending or not. But in case that if it's not specified, this will be the procedure of analysis. The first thing is that we draw the free body diagram and assume equilibrium in the body. So it is actually very important to draw the free body diagram before you conduct or before you proceed any calculation. Because in free body diagram, you will see all the forces that is involved in your analysis. Second step is that you will solve the equilibrium equations. Since we assume that it is in equilibrium, it should uh, it should follow the three equations of equilibrium, equilibrium, which are summation of forces along x equals zero, summation of forces along y equals to zero, and summation of moment is equals to zero. This is for uh, a planar force system. Now, let us check the assumption. If the calculated force is within the value of the maximum frictional force. Okay. Uh, let's have this, for example, the 50 kilogram block in the figure is initially at rest on the horizontal plane. Determine the friction force between the block and the surface P is gradually increased from 0 to 150. Now, the first thing you do is you draw the free body diagram. Since the impending motion is not specified, this is a type 1 problem. So during the free body diagram of the object, we have the weight that is equal to, equal to 490.50 Newton and the value of P equals to 150 Newton. And we have the frictional force since P tends to displace the block to the right, so the direction of frictional force is to the left. And the normal force is upward because this is the support actually 
this is, uh, this is this supports the block so there is an upward force now how many unknowns do you see we have two unknowns now our objective is to uh, determine the frictional force so to determine the frictional force uh, we will use equations of equilibrium for now we will just assume that this is in equilibrium okay so using summation of forces along y-axis it will now allow us to solve for the normal force which is 490.5 that is because summation of forces along y equals zero so we have n positive and negative 490.5 now uh, summation of forces along x will solve for allow you to solve for f take note that f is not always equal to mu n that is wrong that is the maximum value you have to solve first for f uh, we we are we are just solving here how much f is needed to keep this block in place so using summation of forces along x we have positive value of e150 minus f that is 150 so the frictional force needed to keep this place uh, to keep this block in place is 150 newton now let's compare this 150 newton to the maximum value of friction so the maximum value of friction is mu n that is 0 0.50 uh, this is given and 490.5 so the maximum value of frictional force is 245 Point twenty-five. Now, what can you observe? The value of F should not be 245.25. Otherwise, if you solve for F immediately using this equation, you will get a net force along x-axis equals to 95.25 Newton, which is not um, theoretically correct because it will not be in equilibrium. So the, the object will move to the left if you will use a maximal, uh, maximum value of friction, which is mu n. So it's not always mu n. Yeah, mu n is just used to compare the value of frictional force if it is uh, below, because it is the maximum capacity of the frictional force. So since the calculated value of F, which is 150 Newton, is less than the maximum friction, we can say that the block is in equilibrium. And the value of friction is that uh, determined is actually correct. If the value of f is greater than ff max, then we need to recompute for the value of f in dynamic case. So, uh, let's have tipping. So, we can actually solve for tipping if the location of n is at point A. So, the block in that case will be in imp what we call impending tipping. So, in in cases where n is located inside this base, then uh, the box will not be in impending TP. Let's have another example. Uniform tray shown as a mass of 20 kg. If a force equal to 80 Newton is applied to the tray, determine if it remains in equilibrium. The, the coefficient of static friction is 0 0.30. So the first thing we do, uh, since it's not, it, it is not specified if it is impending motion, we draw the free body diagram. So the free body diagram involves uh, the force P, 80 Newton, inclined at 30 degrees, the weight is 196.2 Newton, the normal force acting upward, and the frictional force acting to the left. So. It, uh, it is very important for you to draw the direction of the frictional force. So, if the force is uh, the x component of this force P tends to displace the box to the right, then the direction of frictional force is to the left. So, it is important now to perform equilibrium analysis. So, performing equilibrium analysis, uh, summation of forces along y will allow us to solve for NC. Take note that it is important to solve for NC because NC will be used to solve for F. 
So we start off by solving for NC. We can solve NC by performing summation of forces along Y axis. So when using this equation, you can see that uh, there will only be one unknown, and that is NC. So zero is equals to NC minus the Y component of P, that is 80 sine 30 minus 196.2. Now solving for NC, you will have NC is equals to 236.2 Newton. Now, uh, we can now solve for F since we know N. So, summation of forces along X is equals to 80 cosine 30 minus F. F is equals to 69.3. Actually, this NC will be used to compare the value of the maximum frictional force that can be um, uh, generated against the actual value of F. Now, we have solved for F that is equal to 69.3. Let us compare that to the maximum value of frictional force. So, the, the maximum value of frictional force is equal to 0 0.3 times 236.2. That is equal to 70.9. Since we have determined that F is equal to 69.3, it is lesser than the maximum value of F max, that is 70.9. Therefore, the value of frictional force is not 70.9, but rather it is 69.3. So we can say that the crate is at rest. So let's check if the crate is at the verge of tipping. We will perform summation of moment about point O and locate where is NC. So zero is equals to uh, negative 80 cosine 30. This is the X component of P. So the X component of P has a distance of to point O that is equals to 0 0.2. This is negative because it uh, creates a count uh, clockwise rotation about point two. plus don't forget plus the y component of 80 so the y component of p is 80 sine 30 and since it was resolved at this point the distance is 0 0.4 so this 196.2 passes at point o so this will not be included in the equation similarly f is also not included in the equation since F acts on the point on the plane of contact of the two bodies. It was discussed earlier that F always acts on the plane of contact between two objects. And you have NC times X. Now, if you substitute the value of NC, that is 236.2, it can be calculated that the value of X is equals to negative 0.009 meter. It can be said that uh, NC is within the base of this block, therefore, the, the, uh, the box is not at the verge of tape. There is another case of a uh, situation wherein the problem statement implies impending sliding, and the surfaces where sliding impends are known. So, if the case is impending, that means that the, uh, the maximum friction is used. So mu sn is utilized in this equation, not just for comparison, but it is also used in uh, solving for the maximum force that the that the uh, object can carry to be in stable or in, as in to be in place. So those are the kinds of problems that uh, that uses the maximum value of uh, friction. Okay. So let's take for example this problem. Determine the largest and smallest value of force P for which the system will be in static equilibrium. The homogeneous bars AB and BC are identical, have each having a mass of 100 kg. The coefficient of static friction between the bar at C and the horizontal plane is 0.5. So there is actually two cases of friction here. So, the first one, the first case is that uh, P will prevent this point C to slide to the right. Uh, so, if this point C is sliding to the right, so 
uh, the force P now will be applied to prevent it from sliding. Now, if it is on the verge of the sliding to the right, then the friction, the direction of friction is to the left. Second case is, what is the minimum amount of P so that this point C will start to displace to the left? So there are two, val two different values of P. So if C will start to displace to the left because of the applied load P, then the friction will be directed to the right. That is the second case. Again, the first case is what is the value of P to prevent this point C to displace to the right? So if it, it, will, if it will move to the right, then the value of FC should be directed to the left. In the second case, what is the value of P to start moving this point C to the left? Then your friction will be directed to the right. Now, both are impending cases. The first case is that point C is an impending moving to the right. So the, max the maximum value of frictional force is used, FC, but this time it is directed to the left. For the second case wherein C will start to displace to the left, it is in impending case, meaning we are using the maximum value of friction, but this time it is directed to the right. So this is a type 2 problem because impending case is given. However, finding the largest and smallest values of P are two separate problems. So the first thing we do is always draw the free body diagram. So we replace this pin support here with support reactions. And since this is also a form of support reaction, so you replace this friction, uh, friction surface with normal force and a friction force. But you have to choose between the two. Which one? This directed to the left or directed to the right? Since we are talking about um, to prevent the movement of point C to the right, so we will choose FC that is directed to the left. So we will cross out this one. So this will not be included in the free body diagram. The one included in the free body diagram is the FC directed to the left. Since we are analyzing impending case, we set FC as FC max. If we are talking about impending case, you always use mu S N. So FC max now in this case is equal to mu S N and mu S is equal to 0 0.5 NC. So we can replace FC with 0 0.5 NC. Now, how can we solve for P? How can we solve for P? Uh, given this situation this is a form of a non-concurrent force system so we are allowed to use three equations of equilibrium so to solve for p and nc i think it is best to take summation of moments about point a equals to zero because it will cancel out ax ay it also cancels out fc so what will remain in the equation is the value of p and nc so taking summation of moment about point a that is equal to negative 981. This is the force. And the, the perpendicular distance is 1.5 cosine 30. This is negative because it causes a clockwise rotation about point A. So we have the next force that causes moment about point A is negative 981 times 4.5 cosine 30. Plus, plus means a positive because P causes a counterclockwise rotation about point A. So P times the distance, the perpendicular distance is 1.5 sine 30. And finally, we have NC times the distance is 6 cosine 30. So since we have two unknowns, P and NC, we need another equation that relates uh, P and NC. And that is by isolating member BC. Now, if we isolate member BC and taking moments about point B, we have this free body diagram. So, uh, it was discussed in previous lectures that if you isolate 
uh, member BC, we have to expose the internal reaction at point B, that is BX and BY. Now, the relationship or the equation that can have both P and NC is by having summation of moment at point B. Take note, this is a non-concurrent point system, so we can use summation of moment. So summation of moment at point B cancels out BX, BY, and we can further have an equation that has P and NC. Don't worry about FC, this is not another unknown, but rather it is expressed in terms of NC. So our equation will just involve P and NC. So again, uh, commencing to the summation of moment at point B, we have negative uh, 981 times 1.5 cosine 30. This 1.5 cosine 30 is the perpendicular distance about point B minus uh, P times the perpendicular distance is 1.5 sine 30 plus NC that is uh, NC times the perpendicular distance is 3 cosine 30 and minus don't forget FC uh, FC you can you can write FC but you can directly replace FC with 0 0.5 NC so that NC will just be in the equation times the perpendicular distance is 3 sine 30 now you have two equations that both involve P and NC. You can solve them simultaneously and uh, you will have uh, the value of P equal to 530 U. So in the case where what is the maximum value of P uh, that will uh, prevent I will start this point C to displace to the left. So in the second case, the value of P required to, uh, to displace point C or in impending motion to the left. So since we're analyzing impending case, we set FC as uh, maximum. So it's the same procedure. Now to solve for NC and P, We'll use the previous equation where we perform summation of moment at A. It's actually the same because this time we're using FC to the right, but it passes at moment center A. So it will just be the same equation. So if you perform summation of moment of A, you will just have this first equation. The difference is that if we get another equation that both involve NC and P, we will use the same member BC. So let's draw or isolate member BC and draw its free body diagram. So the internal reaction at the hinge BX and BY, uh, the force P, the weight of the bar, 981 Newton, the normal force, but this time FC is not directed to the right. And the NC is not directed to the left, it is directed to the right, having a value of 0 0.5 NC. Now doing the same procedure, uh, taking summation of moments about point B, you will have negative 981 times 1.5 cosine 30 minus P times 1.5 sine 30 plus NC uh, 3 times cosine 30 plus 0 0.5 NC 3 sine 30. Now you have two equations that both involve P and NC. So solving them simultaneously will give you a value of P that is equal to 1630. And that is a pretty case. So that's it for uh, our lecture on drive friction. I hope you learned something from this uh, video. And I'd like to thank you for supporting this uh, endeavor or this video. Thank you very much.